Maliotakis. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. It's been uh, obviously a very difficult, uh, heartbreaking hearing, but very important that we put the spotlight on these atrocities that are happening and that we work together for solutions uh, to, to end uh, the abuse of these children. Um, you know, I represent New York City, and in New York City, sadly, uh, there have been a number of instances over the last few years of children that were killed. They were killed either in their a home by their parent uh, because their cases fell through the cracks. Um, we had one child, a three-year-old, who was beaten by their father. Um, ACS knew about it, but he was taken away and then put back into the home, uh, which was a homeless shelter, and he ended up being beaten to death. Another three-year-old who was in a foster care uh, facility, facility a foster, foster home, and uh, ended up uh, with a drug overdose and died. Um, how do, we, how do we work with these local agencies? What, what can the federal government do to have more accountability for these local agencies? Because it is a balancing act, right? We had this whole hearing about how we don't want to unnecessarily take children from their homes if we can help rectify the situation. But then on the other hand, you have these children that are falling through the cracks. Uh, they know there's an issue, but they leave them there, and then they ended up, they ended up dead. Do you have any thoughts, uh, any of you, Mr. Mr. Gein in particular, about what we can do as a federal government to try to hold some accountability for our local partners? So, so I'll start by saying that a, a single child death involved in the system is a tragedy. And uh, we also can learn from those instances and localities do child death reviews and use the information from those reviews to talk about how, how could we prevent this in the future. At the same time, we don't want to uh, make the problem seem larger than it is. Um, the, the child fatality issue is an important one, but we don't want to uh, expand it to make it, we think that it is uh, larger than, than, it, than it actually is. Okay, um, I still think that we need to have more accountability measures to find out why those children fell through the cracks, why they were neglected. Was it a staffing issue um, or is it something that's a little bit and, and, and recognizing the impossible decision that we're putting upon, and I'll be stereotypic, a 20-something-year-old new caseworker making a decision with very limited information. It is unfortunate, a tragedy, that children die. It is impossible to make that best decision. Removing the child harms them, causes them trauma. It is often not the best scenario. And so we don't want to overreact to a child death as well. Making policy based on small number of incidents usually lead to outcomes that do more harm than good. Well, thank you. Um, and and um, I am proud to sponsor uh, the bill being advocated for by you, Ms. Hilton, the Stop Institutionalized Child Abuse Act. I think it's a really great step. I know that you've had some success in passing this legislation on the state level. Um, can you talk a little bit about the changes that you've seen uh, happening in the states as a result of this legis similar legislation? Yes, we've helped pass nine state laws, but that's not enough. It needs to be on a federal level. Um, the positive part about it is that people know that they're being watched, but abuse is still happening and children are still dying in the name of treatment. So that's why the Stop Institutional Child Abuse Act is so important, and thank you for supporting it. I really appreciate that. Today, NBC came out uh, with an article. It says, the states fail to track abuse in foster care facilities housing thousands of children, and this was based on a U.S. Health and Human Resources Office of Inspector General report. Um, we talked about transparency, the need to report these instances of abuse and for states to share the information because if you have state, one, uh, a facility operating in one state and they're operating in other states and those states are still contracting with that same company, that's an issue. What other transparency measures would you like to see uh, that could help us with the accountability and oversight component? Well, I have another question. If, if, if you want to, let me get this question, then you can expand because I'm running out of time. Um, the topic of Social Security benefits being garnished by states uh, for foster care has been a growing issue, and we know that a small portion of forced foster youth are eligible for SSI benefits, sometimes inheritance from their from their parents who passed away, um, and this can be particularly helpful for them when they prepare, as you know, as they work to prepare 
to transition from foster care, maybe give them some um, a basis to start with. And I'm concerned about the lack of transparency of that issue and these, these, these SSI benefits being um, taken by the states. Could you comment on that and if that's something we should look to reform? Sure, and I, and I think transparency in that is essential. I also think it's an incredibly complex issue. Um, children often come into care without SSI benefits, and they get SSI benefits because the state agency applies on their behalf. They, they then use that money to reimburse themselves for a portion of the cost. There is a concern, at least among some, that if states are told they're not going to be able to use any of that SSI money, they won't go through the trouble of applying for SSI for children. So we want to make sure that children who would be eligible are going to be found eligible. And if the child welfare agency doesn't do it, they may wind up leaving care still without SSI benefits. In addition, um, if a child had SSI benefits with a parent, the parent could use a portion of the SSI benefits to care for the child. So there, there probably is some middle ground here between the idea of you're not allowed to use any of the SSI funds for any state purpose versus we get to take all of it and you don't get anything. And so I think that, that it's a complex discussion that's worthy of further debate. Yeah, I think uh, certainly the committee should examine it further and would love to work with you more on how we can come to a good equal ground on that. Thank you.